In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our entrance and the fun, O chosen people, proclaim the mighty works of Him, called you out of darkness to His wonderful light. Hallelujah. I'd like to welcome you all today as the first part of our half day retreat in honor of Our Lady of Fatima in Mother's Day. What I have here is a Mother's Day name list. We have over a thousand names. We have many pages of this, over a thousand names already. And I, if I walk into the parking lot, someone gives me a piece of paper with another name on it. So we hope you get up to about 12, 1300 names and we'll keep adding to the list. But we'll be saying the Mass for the Mothers today and this will be on the altar. During the week, we'll be on the altar when we say Mass. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, Communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your spirit. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters in Christ, in order to celebrate these most sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and beg the forgiveness of God. I confess to Almighty God, God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned sin. in my what thoughts and in my words, what, what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my mysterious fault, ever I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. <clears throat> May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who in the celebration of Easter graciously gave, gave to the world the healing of heavenly remedies, show men of Valencia to your church that our present observance may benefit us for eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who is arranged with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The following Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and with violent abuse contradicted what Paul said. Both Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and said, it is necessary that the word of God be spoken to you first. But since you reject it and condemn yourselves as unworthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us, I have made you a light for the Gentiles. You may be an instrument of salvation to the ends of the earth. The Gentiles were delighted when they heard this and glorified the word of the Lord, all who were destined for eternal life came to believe. And the word of the Lord continued to spread through the whole region. The Jews, however, incited the women of prominence who were worshipers, the leading men of the city, stirred up a persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their territory. So they sh shook the dust from their feet in protest against them and went to Iconium. The disciples were filled with joy in the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. All the ends of the earth will see the saving power of God. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. Right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. 
O Israel, we will see the saving power of God. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth will see the saving power of God. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song. Sing praise. All the ends of the earth will see the saving power of God. Alleluia. 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 You remain in my word. You will truly be my disciples, and you will know the truth, says the Lord. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Read it from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to thee, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to Jesus, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father dwells in me, he is doing his work. Believe me that I am in the Father, the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. And many, many say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will do greater ones than these, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son, you ask anything of me in my name, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Once again, we welcome you today. The very last sentence of the Gospel today is quite telling. Whatever you ask in my name of the Lord, he will do for you. God the Father will do. And it's a shame that they ended the gospel today with those words because the immediate verse after that is our Lord says, if you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray to the Father and he will give you another paraclete, another advocate, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth itself that the world cannot accept, but you can accept because you know and you see him and he will be with you, and he will dwell within you. I hope all of you will pray for the gift of the Holy Spirit, that wonderful gift that the Holy Spirit would come and dwell within you. We see in the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles, Our Lady praying with the Apostles that they would receive the Holy Spirit. This is the greatest gift of God Most High. Now I'd like to focus on Fatima, Hopefully the Holy Spirit will guide me and guide you and touch your heart. What is the meaning of Fatima? Well, it has many meanings, very beautiful meanings. The first one is called to say the rosary. Very simple. You are called to say the rosary and to say it at least once a day. Pope Francis talked about this on May the 1st, and he wrote a very simple short letter, but he had great wisdom in the letter that he wrote. He said, say the rosary according to your way. You can say it alone, or you can say it with people. 
it's best to say it with the family, but if you can say it alone, that's fine as well. Uh, also, I would recommend to you that <clears throat> when we pray, we don't always feel full of joy and happiness and prayer is so easy, I'm just going to float up into heaven. Many times prayer is difficult and we struggle and we have to struggle to say our prayer. That's true of us, it's true of all the saints in the world. Prayer doesn't always come so easily. So if you're having trouble saying the rosary, don't give up, keep saying it. In the diary of Sister Faustina, our Lord once spoke to her and said, Sister Faustina, prayer has been difficult for you for the last two or three weeks, but when you were having difficulty in prayer, I was there with you, very, very close to you. So as you struggle sometimes with prayer, don't forget our God is not going to leave you. He could be closer to you than when you feel that you're filled with joy and consolation. So it's a call here to say the rosary in desolation, in joy, but say it and say it daily. That's very important. The first apparition of Our Lady. As we know, the three children had had apparitions beforehand of the angels. The first one of Our Lady, she says, are you willing to accept any suffering that God sends you? And they, full of enthusiasm, say yes. These are very difficult words to say yes to suffering. Then she opens up her hands and the light of God envelops them. It takes them over. And they were standing when she talked to them and she asked them the question, but when the light of God entered into their hearts, they really not kneeled down and they said, we worship the most blessed Trinity in the most blessed sacrament. So they realized that the blessed Trinity is present and that also the blessed Trinity is present in the most blessed sacrament. They also understand that. Later on, Francisco will, will talk about, he says, we were burning in that light. It was like a fire. And I cannot explain what it means. What they were doing, they were welcoming the presence of God. And when they welcomed the presence of God, they became the dwelling place of God. They became like burning bushes. And that's what God wants of you and wants of me. This is one of the questions about the coronavirus. We have become a nation that does not welcome the presence of God. We do not walk in the presence of God, and we need to walk in it once again. That's very important. We fast forward to the last apparition of Fatima, the great miracle where St. Joseph, Our Lady, and the baby Jesus, and the child Jesus all appeared to the three children. What is the meaning of that? We go back to Christmas time when they come and they knock on the door, and there is no room for them in the end. What's happening in the world today is that God is knocking on the door and we're saying there is no room here for you. Let us find room for God once again in our culture, in our politics, in our lives, in our business. Let's find room for God. Not take credit for what we do, but take your credit to God for his goodness and his love. That becomes very important right now. We see in the first reading that Father Ed did how the, Paul and Barnabas were rejected. They were rejected. That is evil. They were rejected. God's word was rejected by people. When you put God aside, you cannot achieve happiness. You end up destroying yourself. That's what's going on in the world today. Many people look for happiness in other places, in bad places, and they destroy themselves, and they do not achieve happiness. So there's this real call to conversion and a change here. It's very, very important that we once again let God into our culture. That is meaning of the coronavirus. We can see that especially in closing down of the churches because we had ignored the presence of Christ in the Blessed Sacrament. Many churches were closed, even before the coronavirus, and people did not realize who was actually in the Blessed Sacrament. Now then you go to a church, people would come into the church poorly dressed, 
and not even make a genuine reflection to recognize that Christ is there. So today we miss Christ very much. We pray that when we go back, we would imitate Francisco, who wanted to spend long hours before the Blessed Sacrament just to keep Christ company. That's very important. John Paul II said something very important about the rejection of God. He says, when you reject God, you take the... You you take away the power of the cross. So let us pray that people will not reject God. I once asked you to pray for the Holy Spirit. Continue to pray for the Holy Spirit because another promise of the Holy Spirit is that he will convict people of their sins and of the mercy of God. So what you need to do is to pray to the Holy Spirit to come to the hearts of many people and convict them of their sins where they would be sorry for their sins and turn to the mercy of God that too is the great call of Fanala. Great call. Stop offending God, our Lord. He's already offended way too much. You don't want to empty the cross of its power. And that's what people are doing by their indifference and in saying we can take care of it without the help of God. That's hubris. We need God's help. We need to say, God, help us in this situation, please. And we pray to God with all of our heart. Now I'd like to go forward a little bit more. We come to what we call the third secret of Fatima, which is a very powerful secret, very powerful secret, which was not revealed until the year 2000. And the children were actually put in prison in Portugal and threatened to be put in burning oil if they did not reveal the secret and they did not reveal it. What is that third secret of Fatima that we hear so much about? I have a picture of it here, which I have. It wasn't words necessarily, but it was an image of what the children saw. What they saw, if you look at the image closely, you see Our Lady up in heaven and an angel that wants to strike the earth because of sin. And Our Lady holding back the hand of the angel and saying, no, not, don't do this. And then you have climbing up the hill, you have a lot of people, both good and bad, and they seem to be martyrs that are climbing up the hill, and one is dressed in white, and that's Pope John and Paul II who was shot. The blood coming down from the cross is the blood of the martyrs mingled with the cross of Christ. So we look at the heritage that Fatima has given to us. Think about your heritage as a Catholic. We go back, we think about who are the people in that picture, people that are sisters, lay people who are being martyred for their love of Christ. And what does the future hold for us? You have to ask that question. That too is part of the message of Fatima. When I think about it, I think of people like Father Jerzy Popolowski in Poland, who gave his life to the communists. I think of Franz Jagerstater, who was killed by the Nazis. I think of Sister St. Edith Stein, Sister Benedicta of the Cross, and many others who gave themselves their lives, many unknown. We have to ask ourselves, what is it going to hold the future for us? Will God ask us ourselves to give our life to God in that way? We don't know. Now, the next step I would like to make is one that was made by John and Paul II when he was talking about the little children. He said, he quoted St. Louis de Montfort, and he said how quickly they became saints. Just a matter of years, they had become holy saints, Francisco and Hyacinta. And in quoting Louis de Montfort, he says, I tell you that one makes more progress in a short time with submission and dependence on Mary, relying on her prayers, on her instruction, more so than relying on oneself. That's very important. Closeness to Mary is a very beautiful thing. And that is what he's talking about there, that it's so important that they would rely on Our Lady for their holiness, and she would guide them and take care of them. Now, what does Our Lady want of you? She said it very clearly to Sister Faustina, the word speaks to me, it speaks to you, it speaks to religious, it speaks to lay people, it speaks to mothers, to fathers, she says, my daughter, I strongly recommend that you faithfully fulfill all God's wishes. 
that is most pleasing in his holy eyes. And once you distinguish yourself by doing God's will, put the will of God before all else. What is the will of God? It's very important that I find out what is the will of God for me and I do it. Now that means, and this is a problem we have today, it means that I have to have help in distinguishing what the will of God is. Sometime I will say, this is what I want to do, and that's the will of God. Uh-oh. <laughs> God's got other plans. I've been there before, so don't do that. You need to pray about it. You need to get advice on it. Sister Faustina says, discretion, reflection, resolution. You have to seek advice. This is the way of holiness, devotion to Mary, with a desire to do the will of God, to get advice on what is the will of God in my life. Now let's talk again about Our Lady. What are the great qualities that we feel? I'm going to give you three of them. Nearness. I think St. John Paul II wrote about her, the second only to God, but the one closest to us. We sense the nearness of Our Lady in our lives. That's a beautiful gift from God, her nearness. She's very close to us, looking after us. The second thing is that she's always going to tell us the truth. She's not, like she says to the children at Fatima, you will have suffering, but the grace of God will be your strength. She doesn't deny that they're not going to have suffering and everything's going to be just perfect. She doesn't say that. She says, you will suffer, but the grace of God will be your strength. And the grace of God will be your strength is hope. So nearness, truth, and hope. These are her great qualities. She's very close to us. She will tell us the truth and she will give us hope. That's very, very important. And wants us to pray for the conversion of sinners. So we see this, but now let's go to another level of Our Lady, why she's so important in the plan of God. We don't understand fully the great words of God from the cross. Behold your son, behold your mother. We don't understand the greatness behind those words. Christ made Mary the mother of all of us to look after us and take care of us. And that means she has to intervene in history. And that's quite a remarkable thing. This is something that historians will not admit, will not accept. She has to intervene in history. The most biggest example that we have of her intervening in history that has been very well recorded is in Eastern Europe. And John Paul II himself will talk about that, and this is what he will say. He says, he realized he grew up with great devotion to Mary, but did not know very much about Fatima at all. But he had great devotion to Mary. And he was convinced with many other people in Poland that Poland, Poland one day would become free of communist rule. It would be done by Our Lady. He was totally convinced of that, but he did not associate it with Fatima at all. Until he became Pope, and then of course on May the 13th, 1981, he was shot. And he realized that was the anniversary of Our Lady of Fatima, and he began to put the two together in his own mind. And he would then say after that that someone shot the bullet and another person guided it. And of course he took the bullet that had been shot into him and he put it in the crown of Our Lady when he went to Fatima. So we see the power of her intercession. And we go back to coronavirus. We need to pray to her. We need to pray to her for many things. We need to pray especially for three or four things very quickly. First of all, we need to pray that people will realize that the coronavirus is a call by God to let God once again enter into our culture. We cannot keep God on the outside. God has to once again enter into the American culture. That's very important that he does that. The second thing we have to pray for is we have to pray for our political leaders. That becomes very important. We have to pray for that there will become some cure of this very quickly. Some cure. That God will enlighten some scientists someplace 
they'll come up with a vaccine to cure this, to overcome this terrible virus that we're facing. And finally, for economic reasons, many people suffer economically, that when we come back to a normal situation or what will not be completely normal, that we will be more generous in helping the poor, the immigrant, and those who need help. Above all, that we will stand up for the life of the child in the womb. I think all of this is included in Our Lady of Fatima's message to us to apply it to the world today. Amen. God bless you. Let us stand and say the prayer of the faithful. If I can find a prayer of the faithful. It's usually, it's, uh, I, I'll, I'll find it for you, it's right, it's right here. It's brought to life. Brought to life by the fruit of Mary's womb, let us pray. Give life, O Lord. Give life, O Lord. The Virgin Mary received your word in faith and brought forth f fruit and love. Through intercession, may your church bear fruit that will last. Give life, O Lord. The Virgin Mary gave birth to your Son, our Savior. Through our intercession, bring your church to full maturity in your kingdom. Give life, O Lord. The Virgin Mary is honored as the mother of God. Through our intercession, gather children from every land to your family through the proclamation of the word and the celebration of the sacraments. Give life, O Lord. Okay, please be seated and we'll start the Holy O oh God, you give life to the world through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through the intercession of his blessed Mother, grant us the light and healing he brings, who lives and reigns with you, unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. For the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbles himself to share in our humanity. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hand, and become our spiritual drink. Bless be God forever. <coughs> our most bitter and contrite heart, be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day it's to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity, cleanse me of all my sin. Pray, brother and sisters, that my sacrifice in yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And Lord, accept the sacrifice of your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray. And accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. With your spirit. Up your heart. Lift them up, your Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right and just. Truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times, we claim you, O Lord. From this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain and lives forever. 
Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. You, the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, Father of us, heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 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 Hosanna Give me things broken. broken. Give it to his disciples, saying, Take, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and was more giving thanks. Give it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the child's of my blood, blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. Forgiveness of sin, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, flesh of resurrection, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the child's of salvation. We thank that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Only partaking of the body and blood of Christ, may we be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, we will please you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co heirs of eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Great Through Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, come thy will, will be, done. be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. It is not in temptation, deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we be always free from sin and safe from all distress. We await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And upon the glory of yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. And not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. Let me reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you always. With your spirit. It's always other a sign of God. Mm -hmm. Thank you. May this be the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bring eternal life to us who receive it. Amen. The Lamb of God. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. The 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not that worthy that you should enter my room, but room. only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Me, I Antiphon, Father, I wish that where I am, what you gave me may also be with me. May see the glory that you gave me. Hallelujah. Do we have a spiritual communion? You want me to say it? I'll say it. We have one of the civilians with you. Spiritual communion is a yellow sheet. I, I know it by heart. I mean, I go ahead. Make your spiritual communion now. Lord Jesus Christ, we believe that you're truly present in the most blessed sacrament, your body, blood, soul, and divinity. We cannot receive you now sacramentally, but come at least spiritually into my soul. I receive you right now. Jesus, strengthen my faith. Jesus, strengthen my hope. Jesus, strengthen my love. Amen. What do we do now? Is I ask you to make a promise to Our Lady that when you can get back to the church and receive communion again, you'll receive communion with a greater devotion, a greater love, and that you would get the grace to receive communion like Francisco and Jacinta would receive it with great joy. So let's say Hail Mary for that intention. Hail Mary, Mary for the grace of the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mary Mother, Mother of God, God pray, pray for us sinners now. now. Let us pray. We have taken of the gifts of the sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him, 
And they bring growth, us growth and charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. With your spirit. At this moment, I'm going to expose the most blessed sacrament, and you can have 10 or 15 minutes of adoration to continue with our retreat. Sacrament, most holy, O sacrament divine. All praise and all thanksgiving giving me every moment time. Sacrament, most holy, O sacrament divine. All praise and all thanksgiving giving me every moment time. Sacrament, most holy, O sacrament divine. All praise and all thanksgiving giving me every moment time.
Sacrament must fill your sacrament divine. All praise and all thanksgiving be every moment time. Sacrament must fill your sacrament divine. All praise and all thanksgiving be every moment time. Sacrament must fill your sacrament divine. All praise and all thanksgiving be every moment time. We have a 15 minute break now. And Father Craig will be here in 15 minutes to lead us in the rosary. <clears throat> 